Well, in the process of getting the shop ready for when the X car arrives, I've uh, one of the tasks I had to do was run duct work for the dust collector to where the X car will be. In the process of doing this, um, of course, I came to this realization a while ago, but in the course of doing the new duct work to the X car. Um, I decided to take care of an issue I've been having, and the issue is these blast gates that I picked up. And I invested in about five or six of these throughout the shop. First, it was a great addition, but I came, soon came to realize that these things, uh, no pun intended, they suck. The reason they suck is because, as anybody knows that's had to deal with these, there is a groove that this door slides slides back and forth in and over a certain amount of time dust particles collect in that groove they don't get sucked out not all of them but most of them they'll slowly collect in this groove and every time you shut this gate it pushes all that particles of dust to one side and kind of compacts it and eventually you get so much in there and keep compacting it back into these corners and this gate will just it won't close all the way so you're left with an air leak and uh, so since I'm redoing since I'm tearing into some of the duct work I thought well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and make my own blast gates uh, this design a lot of people have made this and it's I think it's self-cleaning blast gates so uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna take you through the process of building that and it's actually fairly cheap. Uh, we're going to be using two of these four inch um, metal ductwork couplings, uh, two male ends. Uh, there's a couple bucks there. So that's one on each side will make four dollars. So, and this will slide because I'm going to be using four inch PVC also. So this will slide into this, and then your hose will connect onto this. There's a couple bucks there, two per blast gate, so it's four bucks. Uh, <clears throat> I bought a piece of four inch PVC. Now you can use four inch PVC or the, you know, for uh, pressurized, which is thicker, schedule 40, I think, or eight, I can't remember. You can also use the uh, thinner walled and cheaper drain drainage PVC. I went with thicker because it, I'm gonna be epoxying these onto plywood which will be the main body of the blast gate and I want a little bit more surface area to put the epoxy on. It costs a little bit more but I mean I'm going to use two of these they're roughly uh, not even two inches and when you do the math they're like 16 cents a piece so I'm using scrap plywood I got laying around uh, by the time I'm, it's all said and done I got less than five bucks in a blast gate so I can't complain that's pretty close to what I pay for these. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on there and uh, try to take you through the process of how I make them. Okay, so what we're going to wind up with is two pieces of plywood. Now the thickness of this plywood does not matter. Like I said, I'm using scrap plywood. Right here i got three quarter inch. You could easily use half inch. Uh, a quarter inch might be a little thin. So This is going to be the two sides. And then there will be a center piece of plywood that actually uh, is the door that slides back and forth. And uh, on that also, you can use any um, size plywood, any thickness. I would try to, if you have it, to go something thinner. Just to cut down on the bulk of the blast gate. So we have the two sides, and then we're going to have uh, these PVC pieces I showed you earlier. That's going to be a means of connecting your ductwork to the blast gates. And so what we're going to start out with is cutting the hole in plywood. We're going to go ahead and get this part started so we can get these PVC pipes epoxy to this and have them drying. So we're going to center up as best we can the pipe. Trace the inside and the outside. And the reason we're
reason we're tra excuse me, we're, the reason we're tracing inside and out is we need the inside to know where to cut because we're going to cut the hole here. The outside is going to give us reference for when we get ready to glue this on here so we can have something to use to uh, center it back up into position as it's drying. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and do that for both pieces. Okay, to cut out the center, the hollow, I'm going to use the, my jigsaw. You could also use a scroll saw if you have one, but I'm not a big fan of cutting anything half or bigger than a half inch with my scroll saw. So we're going to use a jigsaw. I went ahead and drilled a couple of start holes for the jigsaw blade. We're going to leave the line a little bit and we're going to come back to our oscillating spindle sander and clean up that hole. Why do I have my camera sitting on the same table that I'm cutting on? I'm sure they look great. I'm sure it looked real good. Super blurry. Nice. Okay, so we have our holes cut into plywood. We're ready to glue on our PVC, and we're going to glue that on with some epoxy. I haven't mentioned any dimensions so far. Like I said, I'm using scrap plywood, so I'm just going with what I have. But I will tell you the dimensions I'm using and the reasons why, and hopefully that will be a help to you. Uh, of course, it's three-quarter inch plywood. Like I said, you could use anything. Three-quarter inch, half inch would be great. Um, six and three quarter by six and three quarter and the only reason that is I went with that was because that's how wide the scrap I was that's how wide the scrap was when I pulled it when I got it and I just cut it square so six and three quarter by six and three quarter it could be made a little bit smaller as far as the PVC that's roughly an inch and three quarters long and the reason that's the length that it is is because with these couplings when they insert into it, that is how far they go in there, plus a little bit extra so they don't bottom out, but they still get a nice tight fit. So, if you decide to make these, you could go with, you could change your dimensions how you see need fit. So, let's go ahead and get these glued on. Remember, we're going to have we have the outside line drawn on here, so we're going to use that line to center this back up and apply it with the glue.
So while the glue is drying on the sides of our blast gate, we're going to work on the we are going to work on the door. The door is actually a sliding door, and one portion of the door will have the cutout circle to match the circle in the sides of the blast door. And the way that works is, let's say this is the side of your blast door, and there is your hole cut in the sliding door. This would be the open position, and if you wanted to close it, then you would simply slide over the door to where there is no hole, and it would close off and work as a gate. So, we're going to mark the location and put the hole in this door. Also, I went ahead and cut what I'm calling standoffs. Uh, these will create the gap that the door will slide in. They will get sandwiched in between the two sides and they will be on each side of the door so it would look something like this if you were to look inside the blast gate and this door would slide in between these two and I made these out of the same sheet of plywood this is quarter inch plywood I made the, the doors and the standoff out of the same sheet that way they are the same thickness and I have a much tighter fit and it seals off better when the door is closed there is a possibility that it may be too tight and we could remedy, remedy, remedy that uh, either by sanding the door slightly to make it a little bit thinner or using shims to shim these out like maybe paper shims. Um, not sure how I'm going to handle that yet if there is an issue with it being tight and I uh, will think on that and decide when I get to that point. But for now we're going to go ahead and cut the hole in the door. Okay, I'm going to use my scroll saws on this hole, uh, being as the door is only a quarter inch thick, and I've already got my start hole drilled so we can feed the blade through and get this thing cut. So now that our epoxy has had time to set up, we are ready to, to do some assembly. And the first thing we're going to do is use these spacers or standoffs as I call them. And you can see, I could roughly assemble it for you, but these will go on here like so. And that creates a slot for the door to slide in. And then when you sandwich the other side onto it, and that creates that slot in that direction that the door goes into. And right now everything's kind of tight fitting, so uh, that's an adjustment we can make as we progress by doing some sanding. But for now we're going to go ahead and put these spacers on. And I'm going to put them on with uh, some super glue. We'll come back and secure them more with uh, some screws. Okay, before I sandwich the other face onto this, I've left, I've left everything a little bit on the big side, that way I could fit it. And if you see, 
the door will not fit into that slot. So I'm going to have to trim a little bit off the sides of the door and keep test fitting it until I get it fit correctly. So I'm going to go over to the table saw and take care of that and I will be back to show you how I got it fit. Okay, we're back from the table saw with the door and you can see I slowly nibbled away a little bit off each side to try my best to keep this hole centered and we have a good fit. It's there nicely. Just enough gap to give it room to move in but not enough to make it uh, rack and get jammed in any way. And you can also see how the hole opens up to the side of the blast gate. Here you can see it shut it off and on. So now since we got that fit we can go ahead and put the other face onto the blast gate. And we're also going to use super glue and then we'll, like I said, come back and put screws through the total, through the complete thickness of this. Okay, we have uh, the screws. I'm going to put some screws in there, like I said, to uh, make this a little bit more durable because this will be carrying some weight. And uh, we got the doors complete. Uh, I was afraid it was going to be a little tight, and it, it was on this one, but as you can see, it slides fairly free now. And it, like I said, it was tight, but I took some beeswax and just kind of rubbed it over the surface of this. Uh, I believe furniture paste would, would also work, or candle wax is fine too. And that just allowed it to uh, slide a lot more freely, and I'm pretty happy with that. I left it, the door a little long because what I'm going to do is attach, you can see I put a line here, and that's I'm going to attach a handle on each end of the door, give me something to grab a hold of. And it also works as a stop in both directions. So it stops, like here it would stop and keep all the holes in alignment. So I'm going to cut those out and attach those, and we'll come right back. Okay, so I... Like the rest of the project, I took some uh, scrap plywood and made the handles for the door. I uh, went ahead and attached one, attaching with screws. That way I could uh, take the handles off later in case I need to take this apart. Uh, maybe the door breaks or there's a, some kind of clog in there, which hopefully there shouldn't be. But still I had that option to take it apart. So I'll go ahead and do our final assembly here. Slide in the door. And then we'll flip it over so we can put the other handle on. Okay, so now we have handles. Like I said, it works as a stop. So that stays in alignment. And also gives you something to hold on to. I also ease the edges of the handles at the belt sander, just kind of round them over to make them look more hand friendly. So with the blast gate now as it is and the addition of these couplings, we are now able to attach that to the rest of our ductwork. And we'll do that now and see how it goes. Okay, here you see the two blast gates that I'm going to be replacing today with the ones I've made. These blast gates, this one's for my uh, table saw and this is for my joiner. These two are the most used uh, duct works and blast gates in my whole system. So they're constantly being opened and closed. And uh, that these two get jammed so much with that dust I was talking about back in the corner. To it. within uh, a couple weeks' time, they're they're practically useless because they'll get so much junk back in here that they won't close all the way. They'll have that, they'll be out that much. They'll leave a good three quarter inch gap, and that just uh, that just totally makes the dust collection useless. So 
We're going to, have to tear these out. I'm probably going to have to modify the length because what I have is actually bigger. And uh, but we'll come back to that. I'll spare you all the details of that. So. Okay, as you can see, I've got the new blast gates installed. Uh, because these blast gates actually have more length to them, I had to modify my existing ductwork by cutting this uh, lead pipe off and raising this Y so I can get everything in here. But it wasn't that big of a deal. So I can already tell I like these a lot better. Uh, probably can't hear. I'll turn on the dust collection. Here, there's a few small leaks throughout the shop, and you can kind of hear whistling from them. And as soon as you open up one of these gates, you can hear that whistling drop off from you know this suction taking taking over. You can hear the air drawing through that real quick now. So it's like I said, you probably can't hear it on the camera, but uh, you can hear it seal off real good. These gates slide real easy. And any dust particles that do get trapped. Let's see if I can get down here. Turn the dust collection off. But as you, so that would have that gate open. And as you close it, any dust particles that may still be in this area that didn't get sucked through will just get pushed out when this hole is exposed. They just get pushed out the back side so that they're shouldn't be any way that this door does not close completely anymore so i think this is going to turn out great um i'll give these things you know, some time to see how well they work and i'll probably replace all the other blast gates in my shop with these so thanks for watching hope you enjoy